सो हे गाइज वेलकम टू चैनल कोड शेफ इफ यू आर इंटरेस्टेड इन लर्निंग कॉम्पिटेटिव प्रोग्रामिंग एंड गेट अ गुड होल्ड ऑन डेटा स्ट्रक्चर्स एंड एल्गोथम दिस इज द राइट प्लेटफॉर्म फॉर यू एवरी वीक देर आर सेवरल वीडियो एडिटोरियल्स ऑन द कोड शेफ कॉन्टेस्ट प्रॉब्लम एज वेल एज वेरियस वीडियोज विल चिल इनहेंस योर स्किल्स इन डी एस एम सो इफ यू न्यू द चैनल दैन प्लीज डू सब्सक्राइब द चैनल एंड टर्न ऑन द बेल नोटिफिकेशन माई सेल्स रायु जैन एम अ कोड शेफ एजुकेटर एंड इन दिस सीरीज वी आर गोइंग टू लर्न अबाउट डायनेमिक प्रोग्रामिंग and in this first video of this series we are going to learn about what is dynamic programming so let's get started okay guys so now let us understand what dynamic programming really is so basically dynamic programming is a concept which is better understood with the help of problems the more the problems we do the better we get into the concept but some of the technical things are also there are some of the definitions some of the keywords which are more frequently used in dynamic programming so we'll be going through that that what are these keywords and what is the exact meaning of it why do we require dynamic programming and what approach we should take while solving a problem of dynamic programming so this is all that we are going to cover in this video and this is an important video for the ones who are starting with the dynamic programming and facing some issues in the dynamic programming that what can be the good approach or some of the things that we need to get uh, understandable uh some of the things that we need to understand while solving a dynamic programming problem right so this is pdf for them so let's start with a simple definition that what exactly dynamic programming is so dynamic programming algorithms uh solves every sub problem just once and save the answer in the table so basically what do we have so let's say we have a problem p1 we need to solve it right so we have this problem p1 and we need to solve it okay so how we should approach to solve this problem right so what we do in dynamic programming is first we try to break this big problem into small sub problems right p2 and p3 and we continue this right so if this is p2 and this is p3 this is again a big uh, sub problem then we'll again try to break it and we'll break it into p4 p5 p6 p7 and this this continues until we reach a granular level for a sub problem that can be solved individually right so what we do in dynamic programming is we divide a big problem into small sub problems and then solve them so let's say that we have reached the last level this is the last level this is the most granular level that we have reached and we'll try to solve this now we'll solve this and we'll use a table or something to store the answer for this so why we are using a table to store the answer this prevents the recomputation wherever the sub problem is encountered again so whenever a sub problem is encountered again so instead of doing whole calculation again what we can do we can simply reuse the answer that is stored in the table prior right so we have computed one sub problem we have computed the result of one sub problem and then we'll retrieve that result from the table and use wherever that particular sub problem is uh, encountered again so this is the simple optimization that we are doing in the dynamic programming solutions right so let's say that this p3 uh, has a sub problem p6 and this p2 has a sub problem p5 so these both are equal right these both are same so what we do we try to save the result in some table and then whenever this uh, sub problem is encountered again we'll just quickly fetch the result from the table right instead of doing the whole process again and this is very helpful right whenever we reach because this is a small uh, small tree uh, we are looking at and whenever we reach a situation where we solve a particular sub problem and which consists of many many sub problems and we know the result of it and that particular sub problem is encountered again then it is simply fetching the result from the table not computing all of the sub problems again and again and again right so this is uh, one of the most efficient way so uh, since we are clear with the requirement of what is dynamic programming what is the definition of it so it is quite understandable that where to apply this whenever we have a question or a problem which has variety of sub problem which are repetitive right again and again we need to compute it that in that particular situation dynamic programming is really helpful how because we can store the result of this uh, answer for this sub problem once and then we can retrieve it whenever we want and uh, any number of times we want right instead of calculating it again so this is where the requirement of dynamic programming is right whenever we face a problem in which we have various sub problems which are computed again and again there we optimize it with the help of dynamic programming so this is the second point that dynamic programming is typically applied to optimization problem wherever we need to optimize it so we'll go to the flow also that how we should solve a problem first 
developing the recursive approach then moving on to the iterative one but this is what uh, the definition of dynamic programming is and this is what the basic of dynamic programming is that where to apply and what is the meaning of dynamic programming right now let us follow more steps on dynamic programming that what are the topics and what are the things that we need to study in dynamic programming okay guys so now let us go with the terminologies of dynamic programming right there are certain properties that we need to look for dynamic programming there's nothing much in dynamic programming that we can learn or that we can memorize but there are certain things which we can remember because they are most oftenly used in dynamic programming so the first thing is optimal substructure you'll hear this term quite often that this is the optimal substructure right so what is this it is a property that indicates that we are constructing an optimal solution of a problem from getting the optimal solution for its sub problem right so let us take an example to understand this property uh, let us say that we want to go from a to c via b right and we want to go in the optimal manner right so this is one way this is second from here this is one way and this is the second one right so from here to here let's say we reach in two units from uh, a to b from this path we require four units from b to c we require here six units and from b to c from this path we require three units right so just to explain you what this optimal substructure means that if you want to go from a to c first we need to pass through b right first we need to pass through b so in which optimal way we can reach b from a that is this one the first one this way with two units of expenditure we can read here we can reach b right so and from b we can reach c with three units of expenditure using this path right so to reach c we require this particular way right so now what this optimal substructure means here is if we want to go from a to c firstly we need to go through b so this is a sub problem this is a sub problem for this particular problem from a to c and to reach this sub problem we need to have the optimal result so what is the optimal result that is this path a to b this is the optimal result from which we can go from a to b and from b we have this optimal result to reach c right so this optimal substructure means that whenever we are solving a problem we require whenever we require to get the optimal answer for this problem we require optimal substructure of its sub problem that is the optimal answer for this sub problem that then only we can proceed for this bigger problem so to calculate the optimal result for the bigger problem the first thing that we need to keep in mind is for the sub problems we need to have the optimal result as well then only we can reach to the optimal result of the main problem this is the single property now the next property is the overlapping sub problems we have discussed in the uh, definition of the dynamic programming as well that what is overlapping sub problems right so whenever we find a problem which is already been calculated or we have calculated the result of that problem so what we do is we try to save the result of that particular sub problem and then we can fetch wherever it is necessary for the rest of the sub problems right so let us say that we are calculating something related to like that let's say that we have this a and it has a dependency on this results of b and c and again this requirement of a the calculation of a is required for another thing right so generally what we do is uh, if we follow the basic recursive method or something uh, naive so we will calculate it again but in dynamic programming that is not the optimal solution that we are looking for we'll save the result of this a somewhere and whenever this whole sub problem is called then we'll only fetch the result so that is basically overlapping sub problem is if you're not understanding what it actually means and where we are applying it we'll go through the problems also because dynamic programming is more of problems so then we can again click on these properties while solving the results of those problems right so this is what more or less the overlapping sub problem means the third important thing is memoization so what generally trend we follow while solving a dynamic programming is firstly we'll see okay what is the basic solution that we can form from the recursive solution right the recursive solution how the recursive formula will be applied what what the things uh, we need to do uh, to get the basic if we are not considering any constraints time complexity nothing we are considering then we'll solve it with the recursive thing okay this is the naive method then we optimize it using certain things that is tabulation top down bottom up approaches that the things right 
सो मेमोइजेशन इज द थिंग दैट टू ऑप्टिमाइज द रिकर्सिव एल्गोरिथम वी आर यूजिंग दिस प्रॉपर्टी ऑफ मेमोइजेशन सिंपल इट इज वेरी सिंपल दैट वील कंसिडर द टेबल स्टोर द डेटा इन द टॉप डाउन मैनर एंड देन कैलकुलेट द रिजल्ट ऑफ दैट पर्टिकुलर मेन प्रॉब्लम through the process we'll calculate the results of the sub problems as well but the main goal is to calculate the result of the one big problem right so it is more or less the optimization for the recursive problem right so from the recursive also we are getting the same results but there are various things that we are doing repetitive in the recursive thing so to prevent that we use the property of memoization that is storing the result in a particular table in a particular memory block and then whenever we require to call the same sub problem we'll fetch the result from that particular memory block right so this is what memoization is it is a tool kind of thing to execute the dynamic programming property for a particular problem right so this is what memoization means there are certain approaches as well that is the top down approach the bottom up approach or top down approach means going from the top and fetching the result in the bottom the bottom up approach means firstly going down and then uh, coming back to get the proper result so we'll see with the help of problems that how we can apply this top down and bottom up approach as well but more or less these are certain things which we need to uh, take care which we uh, which will often come while solving a problem or while reading the text on dynamic programming so it is better to clear these basic things for dynamic programming first and then proceeding with the uh problems on dynamic programming so what generally trend we follow first of all we'll understand the requirement of a dynamic programming problem then we'll try to get the nave result nave solution for it right build a uh, basic solution the extreme basic solution that okay we're not considering any time complexity at all then we'll try after getting the basic recursive solution then we'll modify it into the iterative solution then i'll will apply what is this memoization how we can store the result in the memory and get the results back right then we'll apply this memoization and then finally we'll optimize whole stuff for this dynamic programming uh, problem and then give the result so this is the general trend that we will follow in this series and this is something basic that we have seen uh, for dynamic programming so in the next video we'll study more problems on dynamic programming and see these properties applicable to these problems